In this video, I am going to explain the official RFTC loopback example by Xilinx. So, uh, first of all, uh, go to this repository github.com slash Xilinx slash RFSOC pink. Uh, go to the folder boards RFSOC 4x2. So, the board that we are going to use is RFSOC 4x2. Uh, go to base here we're going to find the tickle script to build the block design so first of all we need to download this repository open the terminal navigate to whichever folder you want to save the repository in uh, then type git clone and the link to the repository this is going to download it Once the repository gets cloned, you can close the terminal and open Vivado. So in Vivado, first you will have to navigate to uh, whichever folder your repository is saved in. Then we are going to navigate to the base.tickle script. So for that, do cd rfsoc pink slash boards. slash rfsoc 4x2 slash base now after this we need to run the command source dot slash base dot tickle this is going to build the whole block design for us Once the block design has been generated, uh, we can generate the bit stream. So first we are going to run the synthesis, then we are going to run the implementation and after that on the tickle console to generate the bit stream we are going to run the file buildbitstream.tickle uh, because by running generate bit stream it gives some uh, critical warnings and the bit stream is not generated. Uh, so we are going to use the file that is already provided in the design. Uh, we're going to run source dot slash build bitstream dot tickle so we can run this command so if we look here uh, this is a really big design with a lot of components but we're only going to focus on the radio hierarchy so if we double click on the radio hierarchy uh, we're going to see that there is one rftc ip so in this video series, we aim to explore the RFTC loopback example on the RFSOC 4x2 board. So this is the RFTC IP that we are going to explore and uh, using this IP we are going to perform a DAC to ADC data transfer on the RFSOC 4x2 board. Here we can see that there is a transmitter hierarchy. This has two channels and each channel has an amplitude controller IP. So in the subsequent uh, videos, I'm going to show you how to design this amplitude controller IP in Vitus HLS. We also have a receiver hierarchy. This also has some channels. And here we can see that uh, this is a channel and it has a packet generator IP. In subsequent uh, videos, I am also going to show you how to design this IP. And um, we are going to make the block design from scratch. Uh, but that block design is only going to contain the radio hierarchy and some supporting IPs. Like the clock wizard and some system resets. We are going to remove all the extra IPs that we are not using in this design. So now if I go back to this uh, github repo, uh, we can see that there are some files over here. If we go to notebooks, rftc. So first we are going to run these three notebooks on the rfsoc 4x2 board and we are going to check the results. And then we are going to make our custom block design with our custom IPs designed in um, YTS HLS 
and we're going to verify that both the results are the same. Right, so this is the notebook. I'm going to explain this notebook in detail in subsequent videos and the rest of the notebooks also. Now here, here if we go to packages, RF system, package RF system, here we're going to find some Python files which are uh, driver classes for the IPs. So these are the Python files uh, that control the configuration and data transfer from the PS to the IPs. These are explained better in upcoming videos and um, I'm also going to explain what changes we will have to make to these files uh, to make them suitable for our custom IPs. Now we can go to the IP folder. Here we are going to find the VHDL code for the IPs which are there in this design. So we can go to amplitude controller, HDL. So here we are going to find a lot of declarations and input output ports. But the main crux of this design is this command. This shows us that basically uh, amplitude controller IP takes as input a 32 bit value and then concatenates it 8 times to form a 256 bit value and then gives it as output. We can also look at packet generator. Again, we're going to see a lot of declarations. But the main crux of this design is the TLAS signal. So this uh, packet generator basically takes a fixed number of packets uh, from the RFTC IP, which are counted by the free counter, and then generates a LAS signal. We're going to replicate this functionality in HLS. So now I'm going to run the first notebook on the RFSOC board and show you the results. So here we're going to import the base overlay uh, class from base.py file and we're going to instantiate the base overlay class by passing it the bitstream base.bit. So basically to run any design in the RFSOC board, we first have to instantiate the overlay class and we have to pass it the bitstream of our block design. Uh, in this design, they have made a custom overlay class called base overlay, which inherits the overlay library, which is already there in pink. Then we're going to run base.initRF clocks. So this command initializes the LMK and LMX clocks uh, for the DAX and ADCs. Then we can run this command base dot radio question mark to see all the details about the radio hierarchy. Then we can run base dot radio dot transmitter dot get channel description to see the channels in the transmitter hierarchy and same for the receiver hierarchy. We can try out a couple of other commands to see their values. Uh, next we're going to set the um, center frequency in the mixer settings of the DAC block. Um, we're going to configure two DAC blocks, one for 900 megahertz and one for 1200 megahertz. Then we're going to configure the transmitter channels by giving them a gain value of 0.5 and enabling them. Then we're going to set the number of samples to 256. We're going to create an empty list and then we're going to transfer 256 samples from the DAC to the ADC. So how this happens, all of these commands in detail are explained in upcoming videos. Then once this data is collected, once all of these samples are collected in the CData list, we're going to import some libraries and we're going to plot this data. So here we can see that the plots for the 0 and 1 channels uh, show random data because they are not connected. In this example, we only connect one DAC 
टू ए डी सी चैनल टू एंड अनादर डैक टू ए डी सी चैनल थ्री ए डी सी चैनल जीरो एंड वन आर नॉट कनेक्टेड हेयर वी कैन सी द रिजल्ट फॉर टू एंड थ्री ऑल्सो एंड वी कैन सी द साइन वेवस सो नाउ इन द अपकमिंग वीडियोज वी आर गोइंग टू डिजाइन द एम्पलीट्यूब कंट्रोलर एंड पैकेट जनरेटर आई पी इज इन एच एल एस देन वी आर गोइंग टू मेक द रेडियो ब्लॉक डिजाइन फ्रॉम स्क्रैच इन विवाडो वी आर ऑल्सो गोइंग टू मॉडिफाई द ड्राइवर कोड्स अकॉर्डिंग टू द रजिस्टर मैप ऑफ आर कस्टम आई पी एस देन वी आर गोइंग टू रन ऑल द थ्री नोटबुक्स एंड वी गोइंग टू कंपेयर द रिजल्ट विद द ओरिजिनल डिजाइन